Okay, so we're going to do a quick lesson on chapter 9 of Williamson's Macroeconomics. And in this short video, I will be deriving the first order condition for the consumption savings problem in a two period economy. And I will also be deriving the Euler equation. Okay, so here are some notations we need to be familiar with at the outset before we begin. Okay, so um, let's presume we are given a specific utility function where u is equal to the square root of c and we know that the objective of the consumer, that is the goal of the consumer is to maximize lifetime utility. Um, so we are going to maximize this um, objective function in terms of c and c prime, which is nothing but the sum of utility from consumption today plus beta times utility from consumption tomorrow and this is of course subject to a constraint which in this case is nothing but the lifetime budget constraint of the consumer which is consumption today plus the discounted value of consumption tomorrow which is equal to lifetime wealth okay now this expression over here can be rewritten in terms of c prime so c prime is equal to w e times 1 plus r minus c times 1 plus r now um, obviously this term here is the intercept and minus 1 plus r is our slope so what we are trying to do here is um, this is our budget line and this is our indifference curve so we are trying to find this optimal point over here where the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line okay cool so um the reason we have rewritten this, um, you know, in terms of C prime is so that we can, um, you know, simplify our task of um, maximizing this objective function. So now um, this can be rewritten only in terms of C, uh, which gives us under root C plus beta times under root um, this whole expression right here, because C prime is now equal to W E times one plus R minus c times 1 plus r cool okay now we note that the first order condition is as follows where we take the derivative of this expression and equate it to zero so that is our first order condition okay now um let me just begin on a new slide so that we have more space Okay, cool. So um, this is our objective function. And when we take derivatives, we get one over two times under root C minus one plus R times beta this whole thing over 2 times under root we 1 plus r minus c times 1 plus r so basically over here i've just taken the derivative of this expression right here and um, that gives me um, this term 1 over 2 times under root this um, expression and um, then we take the derivative of this term, that is um, this term, which gives us this uh, minus 1 plus r. Therefore, this plus sign changes into a negative, and then we equate this to 0. Okay, so um, next I notice that since uh, we can take this to the other side, so um, this can simply be rewritten as follows. Okay, so we can erase that. And this is what we get and this is just basic algebra cool so um, what can we do further to simplify this well we can um, you know multiply both sides by 2 and that means that these twos would cancel out so I can erase those as well next what we can do is um, we can take um, oh by the way I forgot to simplify this further let me do that first so um, let me, um, you know, just rewrite this thingy over here as C prime, because remember we had rewritten C prime as 
W E times 1 plus R minus C times 1 plus R. So this expression over here is nothing but C prime. So we can further simplify this and this whole thing will just disappear and we are going to be left with under root C prime. Cool. Okay, so next um, we can simply take um, these under root C, this under root C prime and this under root C um, to the other side and that's going to give us under root C prime is equal to under root C times beta times 1 plus r. And now we can just square both sides. So that is going to give us um, using the basic rules for exponents that's going to give us C prime is equal to C times beta times 1 plus r the whole thing squared and we can further split this and that would give us C prime is equal to C times beta squared plus 1 plus r squared it will become obvious in a moment why I split this further okay so um, this actually gives us the optimal level of consumption in the future period that is the second period um, but we are not done yet because uh, we still need to obtain the um, C star right so this is just C star prime um, but we are not done yet because we need to obtain the optimal level of consumption in the first period as well um, so for that um, I'm just going to continue on this side of the page let me just okay so um, we had this expression from the previous slide where we wrote um, C prime in terms of W E times 1 plus R minus C times 1 plus R so we have C prime over here and we note that we already found the optimal level of consumption in the future period but um, we still need to find C star right so uh, we can simply plug this in for C prime over here and when we do that so we're going to just equate this with the, with this expression over here um, because we have two equations in two unknowns right so we can simply um, equate this so that gives us C times beta squared 1 plus r the whole thing squared is equal to w e times 1 plus r minus c times 1 plus r cool now we notice that um, 1 plus r this expression is common in every term so we can simply divide this whole thing by 1 plus r and that is going to simplify this to um, c times beta squared 1 plus r because this is squared so we're still left with 1 1 plus r but this and this are going to cancel out so we are going to be left with w e minus c okay cool um what can we do next well simply um we can take this to the other side so that's going to give us c times 1 plus beta squared 1 plus r is equal to w e and therefore um, C is equal to W E the whole thing divided by this because I'm just going to take this to the other side 1 plus beta squared 1 plus R okay cool so we have found our optimal consumption in the first period um, only in terms of the exogenous variables that is W E and beta here is the discount factor and r is the interest rate now all we are left with um, so basically uh, what we were doing in this second part over here is that we were trying to isolate um, this expression in terms of c okay so we were trying to isolate c and bring it to the left hand side so that we could have this expression over here and now that we found um, c star we can simply plug this in over here okay and when we do that um, let me just erase that okay yeah so we are going to plug this guy here because remember this is what we were trying to get c star um, we are going to get c Okay, so let me just begin on a new slide. I don't know why my thing is lagging. So C star prime is equal to um, 
we already obtained this expression is equal to c times beta squared um, times 1 plus r. So basically this um, whole thing was squared, which is why we can square both of these. Okay, cool. So um, this is what we had. And we also obtained c star, which is equal to, um, it was we over 1 plus beta squared times 1 plus r. Cool. Now, like I said, we simply have to plug this in over here. And that is going to give us C star prime is equal to W E times beta squared times one plus R squared over one plus beta squared times one plus R. Cool. So now we have our optimal level of consumption in the future period, in the second period, only in terms of the exogenous variables. And we are done.